بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين على كل أمور الدنيا والدين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ونور قلوبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما تتعلم وتعليم وتذكر وتذكير ونفع ونزفع ورفات والاستفادة والحث على تمسكي بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم ودعاء إلى الخدا ودلالة على الخير ابتغاء وجه الله ومرضاته وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى مع لطف وعافية من رحمتك يا رحمة رحمة اللهم لا تذكى العلم لدني والمشرب الصوفي الهني يوهب يغني اللهم إن نسلك العلم لدني والمشرب الصوفي الهني يوهب يغني اللهم نسلك العلم لدني والمشرب الصوفي الهني يوهب يغني وصل الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين أمين الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله الله all praises to Allah subhanahu wa taala who has guided us around the Quran again this week on Sunday and each time you know actually each time whenever we come to any lesson we always bring in praises to the with the intention that Allah subhanahu wa taala increase us and continue and 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 uh, continues uh to bless us uh in bringing us back to his book over and over and over again uh, regardless of our deeds regardless of our states regardless of our uh what was going on in our lives lah uh, basically because we want you know if 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 hamd uh, there is when there is uh, increase allah subhanahu will increase you when you are when you are grateful so each and every time we come to lessons you always begin with hamd uh, so that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh will continue uh to bless us with this uh, even if we do not uh you know uh even even if we slack off you know we get tired or whatsoever the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still makes us inshallah people who come to the Quran uh at least once a week or twice a week right three times a week you know at least something you know that that on a day of judgment you will count for us as people who have tried uh to uh hold on to this Quran to change our lives respect to the Quran. So So we are at Surah Taqwir, and we're at the we're still at the at the point in the Surah Taqwir where Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala He speaks about the events of the Day of Judgment, uh, and we know that Surah Taqwir very quickly <coughs> it jumps into the Day of Judgment itself. Right. So last week I'm going to just recite the entire surah uh, just for the barakah of the Quran. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا الشمس كورت وإذا النجوم كدرت وإذا الجبال سيرت وإذا العشار عطلت وإذا الوحوش حشرت وإذا البحار سجرت وإذا النفوس زوجت وإذا الموؤودة سئلت بأي ذنب قتلت وإذا الصحف نشرت وإذا السماء كشطت وإذا الجحيم سعرت وإذا الجنة أزلفت علمت نفس ما أحضرت فلا أقسم بالخنس الجوار الكنس والليل إذا عسعس والصبح إذا تنفس إنه لقول رسول كريم ذي قوة عند ذي العرش عند ذي العرش مكين مطاع ثم أمين وما صاحبكم بمجنون ولقد رآه بالأفق المبين وما هو على الغيب بضنين وما هو بقول شيطان الرجيم فأين تذهبون إن هو إلا ذكر للعالمين 
So the last time round, we actually uh, did a revision like on the first part of the surah, and we've been staying on the surah for quite some time. Right, so Alhamdulillah, may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala increase us with each time we we, we, we repeat the verses, we revise. I as mentioned that for tafsir, it is a matter of uh, experience and also a change, a transformation right, of a person as you go through the Quran. It's not a matter of trying to finish right, things quickly. Right? That is not how we approach uh, the Quran. <laughs> no. yeah. Every class, every class is in <laughs> center of attraction. Especially the night classes because it's, it's, it's a very nocturnal creature. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> And I understand also I'm a very, very strong cat lover. <laughs> I love cats. If it was me also, I'd be like, get a cat, get a cat. <laughs> I, know, I know, yeah, it's a thing. In, 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 in uh, Tarim, in Darufake, uh, there, there used to be a cat that would, would come for our classes. Uh, I mentioned before, right? Uh, Hababa Mariam will teach us Fiki. And it's this cat, uh, they will, it's, it's a grown cat, it's not a kitten. It's a kitten, it's, you know, so, mashallah. <laughs> right, a grown cat, they will come and sit in our classes. And also, it will bother us. It will bite by our toes, and it will like, pull things, and pull on your books, and whatsoever. Mischievous, uh, it's a mischief cat. And our mom will talk to the cat. So, you better, uh, <laughs> you want to listen, listen. Right, don't, you know, mashallah. And she also, I noticed that she comes for classes. She does come. Like whenever I'm between classes, she will, she will, she will appear. Uh, and then she will, just think lah, she will be listening. And sometimes she will sit down and they'll listen. And after all, they get bored. <laughs> <laughs> and then they run around. <laughs> right, very short attention span. Mm. But mashallah, it's like when, when it comes to cats, like they, they actually, you know, they can, because they can, they can perceive angels. Uh, they, can, they can perceive angels and they can perceive uh, positive energy. Right, so when it comes to so whenever she comes to the classes, I don't stop her. La, I let her stay here. You know, she's she wants to come. She's not talking about her lah. Eh? Right, she wants to come. I let her come. Right, she, they like it. They like it. And I say when the Quran, they will come to sit on top. Lab, you know, they, cause they they know you know they you know uh, all these positive things. I heard there are many hadiths for Rasulullah Sallallahu and cats. Right, and some allowed for the cats to come to the masjid. Allows for the cats to uh, uh to be amongst them. Right, to to uh. He, to be in his house, right? Because you know, he said the cats they are not nudges, right? They, but they are of those who go in between you. I mean, they, they are amongst you, and right? they are your friends. So basically, the companions they are amongst you, and you know, mashallah, uh, they, uh, they are, you know, uh, it is. I, I do, I do. Okay, I can't say a lot about cats, but, but I know it's all from the side of the biased cat level. <laughs> And the cat level will pull out all the hadith and all the Quran and about it being so good for your soul and being good it reminds you of the Abad Akhirah and everything. <laughs> but I know it's all from because you're, you're, if you're a cat lover, you will pull all the dalils why you should love cats. <laughs> And then how it becomes an ibadah to actually love cats, <laughs> and you actually, you know, you try to like weave your way. <laughs> this thing, you know, subhanallah. When the nafs is, when the nafs is inclined with the sharia, the nafs is like, all right, the sharia says so. <laughs> you know, and when the nafs is like, this thing, the nafs is not inclined with something the sharia is makes it macro. Right, like for example, people who don't like, you don't like onions, you like garlic. Like, see, the Sharia says, right, you shouldn't be eating all these things, <laughs> you know. And then you go all, all, all about it, <laughs> right, because your your nafs itself has a natural, you know, uh, uh, dislike for it. There's a natural liking for it. And it's not like you're like. <laughs> so anyway, it finds it finds love, comfort. What what only later on you will you will wake up and you will start to jump around. And now it's like like this kind of picture you want to take. <laughs> Later you wake up. You wake up, you know, you know. Oh you have to draw it. Yeah, I move my my phone. Yeah, this kind of this kind of position. Oh yeah, who's screaming? Okay, anyway. Yeah, you can hear, you can hear. It's, it's more... New! New! Oh. 
baby. Sayang. Okay dah. Okay. Saya <laughs> kena agak look also. <laughs> Now keep touching it. <laughs> okay. Bismillah. Bismillah. Stop getting distracted by the cat. Alhamdulillah. Right. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> See things coming to me. And my husband, she wants to ask me before. Why, does, why did Allah create cats? Eh? I said you can ask that for anything in 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 this dunya. You know why did Allah create what and what? I said, yeah, but it seems to serve a purpose. <laughs> I said, yeah, they do. And then yeah, but he's like, like you know what about these like house cats? Like, they don't do anything. Just, I said probably just to make our lives happier. <laughs> it's really that's why it's really for for the human beings just you know look at and cool over and think about why cats, why especially kittens, why they. Apa dia makan ni? Tahu lah wala apa tak. Illa billah. Sticker. So sticker. It's kind of like a tag. Like he found it on his on his fur, it was on his fur. No, anyway, like the thing about cats is that uh Muslim Muhammad uh that the sound that cats make. Uh, it actually, uh, it actually triggers off. So I read somewhere lah. Like, That's what cat lovers do, right? <laughs> uh, it triggers off the um, the signals in the brain that the same signals that babies do when the babies cry, like uh, the same sound triggers the same signals in the in. So it's more like you have the crazy cat lady, and not the crazy you know cat man, <laughs> because women tend to be uh, you know more more cat inclined because of the of the of the triggers that you know that same triggers the maternal instincts. Like on babies, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have, they have, yeah. They, yeah. So there's that. Like a baby crying, yeah. Like a baby crying. Yeah, baby sounds like cats, right? Because yeah, that's right. So and, and it does, it does do the same, has the same impact on the woman. Uh, that she like. What's that? What's that? <laughs> then she be like trying to like you know I need to cuddle it I need to <laughs> I need to touch it. <laughs> like, that's how we do it, babies lah. You know, Allah lah. Of course, those who are not cat lovers will disagree strongly. <laughs> like, you know, those who are all cat lovers like all agree. <laughs> it's, it's such a sweet you know uh, discussion. <laughs> Mashallah. Like, but how many lah? Okay, let's Bismillah. Bismillah. Yo, okay. Is this one now? Eh? This one? Eh? Yeah, right here. Yeah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah Huh? Who's that good? Najiha Oh yeah Yeah, she's okay Okay Alhamdulillah uh, Mr. Nama Muhammad Right, wa idha al-maw'udatu su'ilat bi ayy dhanbin qutilat a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim. Right, wa idha al-maw'udatu su'ilat bi ayy dhanbin qutilat. And we took this last week. Right, so where where it actually comes down, the discussion as she comes or the the, the 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 verses come down to this baby girl right, that has been forgotten and right, that it says no name, not given any rights in this world. On the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call her forth and give her her full rights. That's where we stopped last week, right? Uh, and here, one thing that uh, that, uh, that, uh, that ulama have mentioned about this verse is that here Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So basically, basically every single tiny, you know, uh, bit of injustice that was done in this dunya, every single thing. And last week we mentioned about the the the, the goat with uh with a horn and those with no horns, even to that extent. Right, every single from every angle justice will be served right even the most like what we might perceive to be the most insignificant form of injustice right? even then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call forth right and, and Allah because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is the most just he is the perfectly just right so if anyone was to perceive right in this world that there is injustice right that means there is a the flaw is in your perception the flaw is in your perception because you don't you don't see all of time you don't see all of places you don't see what goes on in people's lives and nor do you see a day of judgment right so a human being can never perceive uh, ultimate justice only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can do so then a day of judgment and you will see you know whatever will happen on the day of judgment with respect to justice right so be right? from what sin was she killed you know, was she murdered? 
Uh, in this situation, you see that, that we, everyone knows that the answer is that there is no sin. Uh, there is no sin by which she was murdered. Uh, but she will be questioned, right? and not because there is, that, that, that we don't know the answer. Right? There is no, you know, subhanallah, right? there is no answer right, to why she was killed. Right? But it is, it is uh, to show the people, especially the time of Rasulullah SAW, and Allah's anger on the, the father right, who has killed his baby to the point that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not even ask him why he killed his uh, baby girl. And he's not given a chance to even defend himself. Right? But he goes right to the baby because the rights are with the baby. The baby has rights, right? And, he, and the baby was, his right, her rights were violated. Right? She was, was completely disregarded, her rights, disregarded. Right, so Allah asked directly the the uh, the, the father of it, the, the baby uh, herself, right, and and there is no answer given here, right, because the answer is obvious, right, there is no sin, right, for which she was killed, right. What is a suhufu nushirat, right, and then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala expands the situation, right, to something that is uh, more uh, general. Right, when the pages they are when the pages are gathered together, where right, suhufu, right, suhuf means the pages of your deeds, right, uh, uh, nushirat, and it, it is gathered together. Right, and here also it's a it's a way of speech, you know, it's a way of uh of, of eloquent speech whereby you don't say when the people are gathered, of course they are gathered, right, but the whole point is not the people being gathered. The whole point is that their deeds are going to be shown. Right, that's the point. Now, of course, we know people will be gathered on the day on the day of judgment. Right, but Allah Subhanahu says, the point is the deeds. Right, you will all be brought together, right, from start to end of your life, right, and then you are, you know, you will be questioned about everything. And Allah gave a glimpse of it by speaking about the baby girl. Right, just a glimpse of how detailed Allah Subhanahu wa Taala can be on the day of judgment. Everything can be questioned. That's why the last time around we mentioned, I think uh, last the last semester, lah, right? We mentioned the story of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu. Remember he said to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right? Two memories of jahiliyyah. Right? If I think about one of it, makes me cry. One of it makes me uh, laugh. Right? And Rasul asked him, what, 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 what are you, Umar? Right? And he says that well, I used to have an idol. You know, we spoke about the story. We spoke about the different, uh, a different surah. You know about the the how does it make sense? Right, what what their belief was in the time of uh, the Arabs of 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 time of Rasulullah Alaihi Wasallam. I used to be an idol, and this idol was made up of dates. I used to make like a, like a, like a figure out of dates, right, and I used to keep this idol with me wherever I would go, keep it in my pocket. Right, and one day, you know, I got hungry. I took the idol. Oh, and I ate the idol. So hungry, right, and then I made another idol after that. Right. And then he said, whenever I think of this, and I will laugh. Like, where? And he says, in the hadith, where were our minds? Ya Rasulullah. Right. What were we thinking? You know, praying to this idol that we eat. <laughs> edible idol. Right. And then Rasul asked him, um, what is it that uh, will make you cry? Right. And then he went into the story of his uh, girl, his daughter. He said, I had a daughter. The most beautiful little girl that I had. You know, that, that I had. But when she reached, you know, a certain age, I said to her mother, dress her up. I want to bring her to her uncles, to her in-laws. I right? not to her in-laws. I mean, to his side, basically. Basically, whenever a man does that, whenever he says that, right, it means that he's gonna bring his daughter at a young age, right, uh, to his relatives, right, to see if anyone would like to propose uh, for marriage. Uh, for marriage, there's something that they used to do in the, in the, in the past, and in fact, many societies would do that. Right, and then you know, between cousins they will marry, or second cousins they will marry. Right, it's something that is, that is in the culture of the people. Right, so so when when the, when the mother heard this, right, she dressed up the daughter. Right, uh, and usually it's around the age of six, seven. Right, and they'll bring their their girls there. Right? Of course, son, now now is a is a is a issue in our day. Right, people begin people do that in some societies. Right, uh, of course, in in our modern day situation, there's a lot to be there's a lot to be considered. Right, with respect to this practice, right? But of course, it's something that was done uh, by human beings for generations, you know, and in different societies, right? But really, but the thing about it is that the ulama say, right, different time, different place, different zaman, right? So, like in Singapore, it's different. Right? You can you can do that, right? At at six years old, bring your six year old to a uh, you know, uh, and then see who wants to marry my six year old or who wants to marry my nine year old or my my twelve year old. No, in, in our society different. 
our society is a different situation, different understanding and a different culture altogether. And even our children are of different built. They are different, right? People of the past, in terms of the Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right, when they reached the age of puberty, they were actually women. Right? They were actually strong and they were, uh, they were, they were, they were, they had, they had the, the physique of, of a woman. Now our girls, children, even our teenagers' children, you know, they're still not, <laughs> right, not women, right? They're still children, and they, they can't, they can't handle a lot of things in life, and much less handle marriage. <laughs> right? it's even, even our adults don't handle marriage, so more, more children. Eh? So this I now must say that he did that, um, and uh, so his wife beautified this girl, right, for him, and he brought her out to the deserts, right? and he began to uh, dig a grave for her, right? and she, uh, he said that he said there was some. Right, that it is a very long hadith like, right, of of the the sadness that whenever he he recalled that situation, because and what pushed him into doing that was society, because society branded men who keep their girls to be cowards, right, and men who kill their girls to be courageous. It is men who do so, right. So it's also like you know image. Right, so if they really care about their image, you know, and about being this kind of like manly or so courageous, they can kill their baby girl, you know, and it's it's all messed up. And it, I think we mentioned last time round about how this is why we have Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala who tells us what is right and what is wrong. It can't be the human beings who figure out what is right and what is wrong, because Shaitan can make the majority wrong, and the majority will say, and it happened that was so the majority they were saying that it is courageous and it's chivalrous, right? It's manly to kill your baby girls, you know. And no one questioned that that uh, practice except for a few, and amongst them were the ancestors of Sulawalas, and they were the ones who hated that practice, you know, of the Arabs in killing their baby girls. So they hated, you know, they said, "Why do you touch your baby? You know, why do you do you, do you kill them? Right? Our daughters are the ones who look after us, who look after us when we grow old." They are the ones who serve us. They are the ones who are always there. Right? They are the ones that we, we actually rely on. We call them up. You know, and in the sense, that they keep calling. But as of today, they keep calling their daughters. Right? If they need anything, they call the daughters right, to come and, and, and help them and not the sons. Why, is it? Why not why don't you call your sons? <laughs> right? But it's always like the daughters you know, uh, uh, at the service of the parents. You know? SubhanAllah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He... You know he knows the natures of or the nature of, of people, right? So so and that's why so, that's why when we see this this very clear example, right? That society cannot call it is it does not call the shots when it comes to right and wrong. Society cannot, right? Because right, even our time, and towards the end of time, all wrong will be made right, and all rights will be made wrong, right? So if you try to to resist, you know, or to speak against it, they will say, who's you? Who are you to say that it's wrong? Or who are you to say that it is right? Right, it's, it's all perception of it, right? And from there, you have the entire messing up, you know, of 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 what is right and what is wrong. Right? So of course, it's believers in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, believers in the Creator, right? The Creator dictates, and He says wrong, right? Just wrong, okay? Don't do it, right? And He says this is right, do this one, right? And then and we just we don't even ask Him why, we just you know take whatever He says. Right, so so say that one. We the story like I think I told the last time round, whereby his uh, daughter would uh, clean his beard whenever he would uh, dig the he was digging the hole, and she would come up to him and she would dust his beard, right, and she would help him, right, and then when he reached a depth that was uh, deep enough, right, without without even giving it any thought whatsoever, right, he just pushed uh, her into the uh, into the grave and began to bury her. Right, while he could hear her cries right, out to him. And she was actually excited right, to leave the house with her father, thinking she's going to go somewhere, you know, and have a good time with her father. Right? But he, so it's kind of like, and that's why he said you know, in, in the narration, you know, where were our hearts? You know, that the, the, the first story was where were our, our minds? We were even thinking. Right? And this one, like, where, was, where were our hearts? You can't even, you can't even, like, it's so atrocious you know, and so evil. To do that, you can't even. Where were your hearts? That you could just kill another, you know, a, a, a child that did that to you. Right? So very, very hard hearted, or you just checked out. You're just not even thinking about it. Right? Just, just get rid of her. 
right? Because have to, you know, society says so, have to do it. So Subhanallah. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in this and this verse will be is, is a very is a very serious you know it's a very uh, serious warning uh, when the baby girl who was buried alive she will be asked uh, by what sin was she killed and then it says here and when the pages will be brought together like uh, and when the skies when the sky will be cushy apart right when the sky is torn apart. You know, uh, brought apart. I right? just basically torn apart. The skies will be torn apart. And here we see that, and something you will notice throughout all these verses is that the majahul form is 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 being used. If you take some Arabic, you have taken, you, have, you might have seen this majahul form. The majahul form is basically like this: su'irat, qutilat, kushifat, su'ilat, right? Uh, uh, hushirat. Uh, it's basically it's, it is called the um, uh, it is called the passive form of a verb. I we mentioned this before, or I think in the in the previous in the in the previous semester, uh, it's a passive form of a verb. Like when a when a verb is used in its passive form, right, the entire reason why it's done that way is so as to avoid mentioning the dual of the verb, right. So when I say when the pages will be gathered. So I I don't say when when the angels gather the verses the, or the pages when I say that the, or I don't say when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala does it like I just say that even it happens right so and this is done uh, in the Quran many times right uh, the use of the the use of the they call it the majhul right the uh, what's the English word again passive. <laughs> And right, the use of the passive form, the passive voice, is because the people in time of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi right? They don't believe in the day of judgment. They don't believe, and some of them don't even believe in, in our time that those who don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa taala or don't believe in the angels. Right? So when you mention the doer of these actions, right? There is like an understanding that the people un- believe in the doer. Right? But what they said, oh, but we don't believe in the doer. You don't believe in God. You don't believe in the angels. You don't believe in you know. So the dua is removed, right? And it is said that it will happen. This will happen. Right? Whether or not you believe in the dua, right? Uh, uh, and because that the belief in the dua right, of these actions can be a barrier to them, right? Hearing what is going to happen. You get what I'm saying, right? So the the, the dua is removed, and the form is going to be majhul. Right? It's going to be passive. Right, so you focus on the action that's being done, and you don't have your discussion or your argument on the doer that you don't believe in, right, or that you believe in. You get it. Right, so the focus, so the removal of the file of the doer, right, it actually brings fo- us into focus of the of the action that's being done. Right, so when the skies will be torn apart, right, whoever tells it apart, we don't know. I, of course, we don't lie. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the angels, right? And, and, and of course, you know, and then again, it, it's the angels who, is, who, are, who are doing it. Right? But the whole point is it will be torn apart. You know, it will be, you know, what is that when the sky is torn apart, meaning in the last part is the sky because the sky, right, it is the, like, it is, like, subhanAllah, the sky, it is the protector and the barrier for those on earth right, with respect to what's out there. I you know for us on earth the most the scariest thing that we can think of that can happen to us is like an asteroid hits us. And then like they, they, they think about it. You know, and even like in, in, in whatever stories, you know, the sky is falling, the sky is sky is dead. Right? So when the sky collapses, right, nothing on earth is going to uh, uh, going to be able to stand that. Right? Whereas earth calamities, you know, earth uh, uh, Muhammad, uh, natural disasters on earth. Right, maybe it happens on some people, and it will not uh, affect other people. Right? And maybe people say you can, you can still escape, you know, to another part of the earth. Right? Whereas if the entire sky gives way and gets torn apart, right? And now also you wonder, eh, what does it mean when the sky torn, uh, tears apart? Right? You know, all this. Actually, I always wonder right, whether you know, like, how does it? How is it going to be when the sky tears apart? Which tells you that our theories of you know uh, of space, you know, and the universe is really lacking, because it can be torn apart. Allah says tears apart. It tears apart. How? Right, if you're thinking about it, it's for the sky. The sky is just what's up there. That's the sky. How do you tear that? 
And if, if, if we believe the sky is basically space, right? how do you test space? Space is nothing. How is space taught? Right? If, you think, if you think about it, right? The layer of atmosphere, yeah, but then any that one is the atmosphere. That's that's this air. Yeah. So I can see the sama. Sama is whatever's up there. That is sama. It's whatever's up there. So of course we don't know. We don't know. We we see all these things. We know it's gonna be torn. Right? But we have no idea the, the how or the why, right? And, and we don't have no idea the, the, the how and that is basically the answer in the sense that that's not your issue. <laughs> Your issue is not to figure out how the sky will be torn apart. Your issue is to prepare for the day when the sky will be torn apart. That's your issue. And that is was shown to us by Rasulullah in the very famous hadith about the man that came to him and asked him, when is the hour? And he asked directly, you know, when is the hour? And he didn't even ask, how will the hour happen? Like, how will it come about? How will this, how will that? No. He just asked, when is the hour? And Rasulullah he guided the man and said to the man, what have you prepared for it? Because that's the more correct question. Right? So like, how will the sky be torn apart? That's not the correct question. It will be torn apart. Right? It, just, it just said it will be torn apart. What's the correct question? What have you prepared for the moment when it begins to tear apart? Right? You know, what, what have you prepared? And the same thing with a lot of uh, things in our religion, right, whereby the, the correct question needs to be asked. Right? What have you done? So like even now, like the people are, they, they're going all about this, mahad, this, this, this what is, what is it called? It's called the what? Messiah. <laughs> but I say Mahadi. I was about to say Mahadi. I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not even called Mahadi. It's called something else. Yeah, this movie and whatsoever. And they go on and on about it. Right? And the question is basically, are you even praying? Are you fasting? Are you obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Uh, you can really go into all of these movies and say all their conspiracy and talk about the Illuminati and talk about this, talk about that. You know, at the end of the day, you're doing your prayers or not? You're doing your tahajjud or not? You're doing your Quran or not? Coming for classes or not? At the end of the day, like, what matters is all these things. Like, don't be deluded like, into, into like, you know, thinking about all these conspiracies. And then, and then what? And then they go back to their life. Their own lives, and they go back to their own, and they watch the next movie. That's up. <laughs> right? I mean, technically, you know, think think about it. Think about it. And right? why do human beings do these kind of things? Right? And then they get they get all hyped up about it, and then, and then, and then right? same thing with all like, you know all this like, like they they draw about they draw about Islam and everything. And of course, we don't like it, and we stand for our Prophet Sallallahu right? Alaihi Wasallam. And then you ask them about the Sunnah. Right? Do you hold on to the Sunnah? Do you, do, do you hold on to his way, his teachings? Do you learn the hadith? Do you learn the Quran? I'm going to be so fired up. And then like, you know, the work, the real work that needs to be done. Are you doing it? The Subhanallah. And this is how the Quran guides us also. The Quran points us to, are you focused? <laughs> right? Don't let, you know, all these things are there to distract. Right? All, these, all the distractions, distractions, like when you get distracted <laughs> right? by all of these things. Right? But at least, you know, subhanAllah, try to make it focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? inshallah. Right? So, so you see this, the, the usage of the uh, majhul form, right? the passive form. Right? It is just to focus you that these things will be there. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not bother explaining to us how it will happen. Right, nor do we actually find in the hadith how it will happen. Right, no one tells us how it will happen because it's none of your business how it happens. <laughs> it's going to happen. Da, finish. So, and the, the last thing that is mentioned here is about the sky. Because when the sky collapses, that's it. Everything ends. Because our sky is our canopy. Right? It is a form of security and safety. So if that goes, because even the mountains, the earth, the the, uh, the the seas, right? Even that, you know, it's okay. You can still flee. You can still run away. You can still find a place to stay. But when the sky gives way, the sky you know, begins to have all these cracks inside, you know, and begins to, 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 to fall apart, right? there is no running away. And this is the last thing that is mentioned before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes into the Day of Judgment saying, وَإِذَا الْجَحِيمُ سُعِرَتْ وَإِذَا الْجَنَّةُ أُزْلِفَتْ right? And when the, the hellfire is set ablaze. 
So this brings us to the day of judgment itself. And Allah knows best, you know, how what all this means. And we're going to go in the second half, inshallah, today. Uh, because the second half is where you have all the reminders. So Allah says all of these things in the beginning of the surah to get the attention of the human being. These are all tools of getting attention. Right? To get your attention, then He will deliver the message. Right? Or He will deliver the lesson. So all this fun part is not meant for you right, to obsess about. Yeah, we've been, but we've been on it for a long time. <laughs> yeah, but it's not meant on you to right, to try and go into issues that's not your business, right? So when people speak about you know Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and His creation and whatsoever, there is a place and time for it, and you go into it for as far as you know it brings you wonder, you know, it brings you closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, right? It makes you love Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala more. Right? There, there's a function, right, for it. Right, but to go into a complete obsession like, of it, and you wonder like what's what's the point? Like can you can we be you know uh, focused on what matters to us in life? So he says, and when so all of these things bring us down to the crux of the matter, paradise and hellfire. Right. So what it is jahimu surat. Right. When uh when the fire is set ablaze, what is al jannatu uzlifat. And when paradise is brought close together with its scent, right, its aroma, its bliss, its its uh, its rewards in paradise, and here, Subhanallah, for hellfire, the word that is used is set ablaze, so and the fire will begin to to to, to rage right, even more. So it's something that is from the hearing, right? And Jannah, it will be brought close, so close, right? You actually see. That you know, uz lifat when it's brought close, it covers the sight, the hearing, and the smell. Right, uh, the, the, the human being can fully perceive paradise. Right? And some of the ulama have mentioned that that if a person because of the, of the hadith, where Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam you know mentions about certain people who commit sins, and he says they will never smell paradise. They will never smell paradise. And these people, you know, who, whatever, like, you know, in, in, in the hadith about those who uh, uh, have camel humps on their heads, you know, all the hadith, eh, they will not smell paradise. Right? They are clothed, but they are naked. Right? They will not smell paradise. Which shows, you know, some of the ulama have mentioned, it shows right, that uh, the moment a person smells paradise, that is a confirmation that they will enter paradise. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not let you uh, experience something, you know, so amazing like paradise and then only to throw you into the hellfire. I mean, that is really like, that's really the, the extent of it, right? To do, to, to do that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we, we have our opinion of Him subhanahu wa ta'ala is that He will not do that. Right? He might place people in the hellfire because of their own deeds and thereafter forgive them and then placing paradise by his own mercy. Right? But if he lets anyone get a taste of paradise, tiny taste of paradise, then inshallah, this person is, is a sign that you're entering paradise. As you mentioned before also, that if you have bliss in your grave, it's a sign of more and more bliss. Right? So you don't have to be afraid thereafter. Right? But if you have punishment and terror and horror in your grave, right, then it can, go, it can swing two ways. It can get worse, or that the punishment in the grave ended there. You know, day of judgment, everything is done. I mean, everything is settled, so you can, inshallah, enter paradise straight away. Yeah, but of course, for us, we, you know, <laughs> you want you want bliss in the grave. You don't want because bliss in the grave means bliss all the way. Alhamdulillah. Right, so we don't even leave our surah surah muluk every night, right, because of the hadith that surah muluk, mani uh, It is one that prevents the azab of the grave. Right, just by the hadith we hold on, we don't let go of our surah muluk every night. Right. So he says, Ali mat nafsum ma ahbarat. And that is the answer of all the wa'idha. And when all this happens, the only thing that will run through the head of the human being is what has what has he prepared? So when you see all these things happening around you, and may Allah not allow us to be of those who will witness this, you don't want to see all of these things, you want to die first, you know, and, and be of the people who will be in their graves when the day of judgment is stood. 
because in a hadith rasulullah said that the day of judgment will only be stood on the worst of human beings the day of judgment will come onto the or not the, day of judgment, the last day the last day will come on the worst of human beings right it's those who don't pray they don't say allah allah and the quran will be uh will, will be lost by then uh, by, by, by then so inshallah you know we are hoping that by all these signs that we are not those people <laughs> We don't, want, we don't want to be those people. And inshallah, and we also do add that our descendants will not reach those people. Meaning that our descendancy right, will be cut off before that. So all of our descendants will be Muslim. And then it ends there. And no more kids thereafter. Right? And then so it cuts off. Right? There and, then, and then those that come thereafter will be the, uh, will be the, will be the worst of people. And of course we also know that uh, the wind. Right? The wind that will be sent. That is called the... Well, what is it called? Right, the the seizing wind, right, or the one the wind that goes around, and it enters into the the bodies of the believers and takes their souls, right, to the point that all the believers will die, and then these believers will be left behind, and these will be the people, right, who will see the last day, right. So all of this that we've just read, right, about the last day, right, inshallah, right, as long as we are believers, as long as there are believers on this earth, right, it will not come. Only when they all die, right? Then he will come. And it's, it's quite scary. Like, whenever you go into the, the, the when you go into the hadith about the end of times, it gets very scary, right? Because try to imagine, we are right at the forefront right now, right? And then the next thing is going to come up the Sufiani, right? Uh, and who are they? We don't know. Allahu Alam, the Sufiani, and it's, it's, there are two Sufianis, and we don't know whether they have come already or not, right? And then they're after the, the Dajjal, right? And and Subhanallah, actually, honestly, I really feel it. Like, that uh, the very fact they have they have they have shown this movie and I've not watched it also I don't I don't know what it's about. No time eh, to watch all these things. <laughs> right. But I know someone told me that they at at, at um uh, some of the masjids and it's a it's a it's a good dawah effort because people watch it anyway. Right that they actually analyze the movie and they 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 throw out what is not right, and they uh you know I don't know what they were doing like basically but basically they they're doing that is is this dawah. It's good dawah because people do watch it. Right, and then they need people to actually show them, you know, that Dajjal is not a misunderstood creature. Right, when Dajjal makes people misunderstand right, a lot of things. Right? He, he will confuse the entire affair. Right, so don't trust Dajjal. Of course you don't trust the Dajjal. Right, but then again, you don't trust people who make films like this. You don't trust them. The only person we trust is the Prophet. That is the only one that we trust. So whatever he says, that's what we hold on to. Right. And in fact, you know what? As an, as an, as an, if they really want, as an extension in, in addressing this movie, instead of speaking about the movie itself, right? Actually, you know, we should actually do our own classes about all of what the Prophet Sallallahu <coughs> Wasallam said about the situations, and right? then we can know exactly what's the truth. And straight away, when we see the, when we see this kind of situations, we know to reject. And of course, even easier than that, you know, inshallah, easier than that, uh, is that when you hold on to the Quran, to the Hadith, to the Sunnah, to your, to your prayers, to your fasting, right? When it comes, it comes, and you, you will have no issue with it, right? Because you've been holding on to the way of Rasulullah Wasallam, and the one who does that will look with the eye of inner sight, and you will not be fooled. It's only the ones who have been indulging, right, in the uh, uh, in the dishes that the Jal has been serving. That those are the ones who will be confused, right? Uh, the uh, judgment, or, or when when he comes out, right? It's very simple. It's a very simple affair, and there are some so many times in the hadith tell us it's a very simple affair. Hold on to this religion, hold on to what you have been taught, hold on to good deeds, and stay away from what is what is harmful. It's as simple as that. But we're just not doing it. <laughs> we just need to work harder uh, in our uh, worship of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and also bring people, right? And to stop. Taking what will mess with our minds and mess with our hearts and then mess with our prayers, mess with our <coughs> ibadah, and right? try to keep, you know, start to really throw it out of our lives, trying right? to cleanse ourselves. So he says here, uh, right? So on that day, only one thing will ring in the minds of people, and that will be the question What have I done to prepare for this day? Everyone will think about this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leaves it there. He stops it there abruptly. And then he goes into a uh, into into an oath. And he says, Fala uqsimu bil kunnas al jawari al kunnas 
والليل إذا عس عس والصبح إذا تنفس. Allah takes an oath at this point. Right? فلا the لا here لا أقسم. Right? So this لا is لا زائدة. Right? It doesn't mean that I don't. Does not mean that I don't take a vow. It means, it means you know enough. Right, enough. You know, it is. It is how many times or, or what will it take for you all to be serious about life? So the fala here, it just you know, like, like it, it puts a stop to all the discussion or all the argumentation or all the excuses people give. Enough. You know, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala points us to ultimate guidance, and this is the Quran. But before he speaks about the Quran. He takes several vows. And the first vow that he takes is his uksimu. I is the I that is there, and the, the uksimu has an I in there, right? as, as 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 compared to the word uh, wala asr. Uh, wala asr is it is it an oath by the asr, right? but there is no I that is placed in the oath. You see that? Right? There is no like, I swear, I take an oath by this. Wala asr goes by time. And we know that Allah is the one who's swearing by time. He's taking oath by time, right? But uqsimu is a very is a stronger form of taking an oath, right? In a sense, it, it stops all this nonsense that's going on before that. And the other part we see is this this this, this verse is in Surah Balad, right? فَلَا لَا أُقْسِمُ بِهَذَا الْبَلَدِ وَأَنْتَ حِلٌّ بِهَذَا الْبَلَدِ وَوَالِدِ وَمَا وَلَدِ and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins Surah Balad in that way. Instead of saying a wa, right, you know, and, and swear and take an oath by the city of Mecca, right, he stops the discussion that was going on because they were arguing about Mecca, you know, being, you know, uh, under who and Nabi Ibrahim and the Arabs and what's what. They were arguing for a lot of things. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put a stop to it. Right, and then he explains to them what is it about Mecca. Right, from his, uh, and we went through uh, Surah Balad before, eh, before this. So he stops the the the, the, the uh, argumentation, you know. Subhanallah, it's as if, of course not it's as if, and Allah subhanahu he knows. And right? that there will come a time where people will read these verses and they will be wondering, you know, what's the scientific explanation? You know, they will they'll say, oh, this is, what's the, what's, how do we understand this from, you know, the astronomical point of view? And it's kind of people like me, like, I'll think about all these things. So I'll think, think, think how, eh? Like, how does it mean that the earth, that the sun will wrap up? Like, why? And when you look at all the stuff, say, no one talks about it. Right, why? Because it's not your business. <laughs> it's really not your your affair to know how it will happen. Know it will happen. Then know that when it happens, the only question that will come to your mind are not all the questions that right now you're thinking about. There's only one question. What have you done? Right, and when you understand that one question, you will prepare the answer. And that's with any test. If you know the questions that will be asked for the test, you prepare the best answer you can prepare. <coughs> for that uh, question right, So ma ahadarat Ask yourself What have you prepared For the year of judgment That's what Rasul Sallam himself Asked the man right, It's not about when the hour will be What have you prepared for it So he says Uqsimu bil khunnas Al jawari al khunnas right, These khunnas are the stars <coughs> right, There's the five, five stars Right, that is in the uh, horizons, right? And they have the the uh, the Arabic words for the stars, right? Uh, I don't know what the English words are, right? But they they have the Arabic words uh, for the stars. They are bright stars in the horizons, and then the stars are known by the Arabs. And the Arabs, uh, they they use the stars for navigation, right? and they depend on the stars. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He takes an oath by His stars, right? And then He takes an oath. Uh, uh, by the night, the night when it becomes darker and darker, right? and then it takes an oath by the, the morning as it breathes, when the morning breathes. Then all of these things, you know, that ulama they comment on it, that ulama they don't comment on it, right? But basically, they will say that uh, uh, that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala takes an oath by the greatest of His creation, right? The stars, the night, and then uh, the morning. Right. And here, let me just uh, look through this. Right. And here, right, it is it is really because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is going to speak about His greatest gifts or His greatest gift to the to, to humanity, and that is the Quran. Right. So the stars are a gift to 
to us because in the, by the stars you can navigate at night when there's nothing that you can see at all you can see the stars and that's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's a divine uh, wisdom and divine mercy that he gave us the stars then this, the, the night is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the night covers up the human being so you're able to sleep you're able to be together with your family members right and uh, and, and basically there is, there's a secrecy about the night that the human being needs requires secrecy then the morning it's very interesting about the morning is that the morning when it breathes right and we know when the when the morning comes the the uh the the plants begin to throw out their oxygen there's a breath right that happens in the morning and there's some things that go on in, at night that brings with the morning fresh air and sometimes you wonder that what goes on eh? right, at night because at night technically right, by science eh, technically the plants are throwing out carbon dioxide Right, and not producing oxygen. So why is it that the morning air is crisp and fresh? Right? And it's everywhere. Whether you're in Singapore, whether you're overseas, you're in the mountains, you're in the by the sea, everywhere in the world, the morning air is crisp. Right, and there's a freshness to the morning air wherever you're at. I don't know. You can look up a lot. Why? Why is it? Is it why, why the subhi is at the nafas? Even in that time, the the the, the Sahaba they knew that, that, that it's as if. The, in the night, there's a, there's a cleansing going on, like a filtration going on, right? And in the morning, the air is nice, is it nice? And even we can we can sense it, you can feel the niceness of the morning air. And all of them, I don't know, I really don't know what this, but <laughs> about the scientific, but because the tafsir don't, don't, don't speak about it. And the thing about the tafsir, mashallah, is that they don't actually dwell so much into science. Right? For us, it's, it's a language of da'wah in our time that people appreciate. When you go into science, they they they, they get pulled, they, they, they appreciate. But again, to an extent, and at the end of the day, they have to ask themselves if they believe. Then begin the work, right? That's all you're going to be asked about the work, right? Not not so much about how you understand. But mashallah, I mean, it's, it'd, be, it'd be interesting, lah. You know, to, to, as a commentary on this verse, was subhi is that enough? Pas, you know, uh, when it when it when it when it when it breathes, eh? Subhanallah. Right. Uh, so, so it says here that you know when there is a there's a breath that comes out uh, in the morning, it comes after the night. Allahu alam. You know, Allahu alam. <laughs> right. If when you come into uh, the ten days of uh, Zulhijjah, right, they will go la ilaha illallah ala layali wa shuhur. Right. So it's the entire zikr that you do about la ilaha illallah. This part is there. I la ilaha illallah idha idha layli idha as as la ilaha illallah idha subhi idha tanaf uh, 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 subhi idha tanafas they, they, they were going to that and because of this of the great signs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has pulled out so his vow here then he says innahu la qawlu rasulin kareem dhi quwwatin inda dhi al-arsh makin مُطَاعٍ ثَمَّ أَمِينٍ وَمَا صَاحِبُكُمْ بِمَجْنُونٍ right. So Allah says إِنَّهُ right. إِنَّهُ for surely it right. the it here refers to the Qur'an right. so, so you see the, the greatness of Allah's, Allah's creation the, the sky, the stars and then uh, the night and the day right. all mercies from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the greatest of his mercy right, is ascending down on the Prophet together with this book, the Quran. So he says here, Innahu for sure the Quran. And and there are many parts in, in the Quran itself whereby Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not say the word Quran. He says it. Because at this point everyone is, is wondering about this book. Because this this, this surah began right, by all of this in, of his these occurrences that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will know about. Nobody can tell you what will happen in the future except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet himself, when he speaks about the future, is only by the permission and the information from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even the awliya, and there are awliya who inherit this thing also from the, from the Prophet, that they can tell things that have yet to come. They have, you know, they have that kash, they call it kashaf. Right, and it's also only by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah gives them the knowledge, they didn't know. If they don't give them the knowledge, they don't, they don't know. Right, so here, you see, you know, the Quran, innahu, 
Right. Because at this point, going through all these verses, the disbelievers in time of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they are thinking, what is this Quran? Right. Why does it speak that way? You know, it speaks about things that that have that's really you no know, without any doubt whatsoever, and then it takes a vow, you know, on all these great things in the in 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 the in the, in the universe or in creation, you know, by the night and by the day, you know, all of these things, like so, all of this innahu, we are saying inna al Quran, because it's really in their minds right, you know, they're thinking about the Quran innahu. لَقَوْلُ رَسُولٍ كَرِيمٍ right, It is the word uh, uh, of a noble messenger. Right? And here, it actually refers to Jibreel. It's not to Rasulullah right? Sallam. It actually refers to Jibreel. قَوْلُ رَسُولٍ كَرِيمٍ It is the word of a noble messenger, meaning it is from angels. Right? Because they were saying, oh, he's getting it from the devils. He's possessed. He's making it up. Right, so they, they, they are already seeing Rasulullah Sallallahu <coughs> Alaihi Wasallam. They're already seeing Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and they are basically blaming him, or they're basically accusing him of either uh, lying and making up the Quran, or saying that oh he's crazy, you know, or he's possessed. Right, so Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala defends his Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by saying, for surely it this Quran, it is from an angel. لقول رسول كريم ذي قوة عند ذي العرش مكين. Right, it is one of firmness and strength, and that is Jibril عليه السلام. Meaning he's not being bribed. There's no you know bribery here. There is no uh, force. He's not being he's not being you know Rasulullah is not being forced uh, uh, by any human being out there who's making him say what he's saying. Right, it's basically a, a noble word. From Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, I'm the the Arsh al Makin, right? That Jibril is together with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So I'm the the Arsh al Makin, right? He is with the one who has the great throne that is, uh, that is that is established, the great established throne. Right, Makin here uh, refers to Jibril also, right? The one who has a sta- station with the angels. Right, so Makinin, it refers to the to the Jibril. Right, he is of the best of the angels. I right, has the of the angels. Muta'in thamma amin. Right, he is obeyed by the angels, and he is trustworthy. Right, and all of these things is all in defense of Jibril, right, because of the there are people in the time of Rasulullah Sallam who say that uh, first and foremost they deny or some getting the message from Jibril, and secondly those who actually believe in the angels, like the, the the Jews of the time of Rasulullah Sallam. They say that Jibril sent the message to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam out of spite against the Jews, right? and he decided to go to an Arab and send the message. Right? So it's all weird ideas, lah. <laughs> like why would they think of all these things? Right? To explain why the last message went to the Arabs and not to the Jews. Right? So, so Allah says, you know what? Muta'in uh, thamma amin. That all the angels obey Jibril Alayhi Salam. And he is completely trustworthy. He will not disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nor will he uh, khiana, nor will he be treacherous uh, with this message. In fact, they're all angels, and angels can only obey. There's no, there's no uh, option for them. Eh? They only obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all of this, the, the vow, it is with respect to the Qur'an, and to show the dimension of the Qur'an, that it is uh, it has come to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at the hands of the angels. And of one angel, and that is uh, Jibril. And Allah Subhanahu Wa gives us the description of who is Jibril. He is noble. Right? They don't lie, the angels. Right? They are is from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He is all he is uh, in Jibril, he is strong. Right? So he does not you know uh, he's not swayed uh, by anybody uh, on this in this creation, but he is on the commandment of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Uh, he has position. He is obedient and he is trustworthy. Right, so Allah gives down all, down all of his statements, uh, all of his traits of Jibril to understand the credibility of this message of the Quran. Right, then he goes and he says, Wama And this tells us what was happening actually. That they were actually calling Rasulullah Wasallam crazy. Right, or they were calling him uh, possessed. Right, because he kept saying he kept saying that he's seeing an angel. And and honestly enough, 
right that someone who has an experience with angels right it is it's very difficult to co- to convince the people that you are actually having an experience with the angels because most human beings only have experiences with the devils right you only they only get like jinn coming to them when they get possessed and whatsoever so <coughs> technically only the prophets get angels coming to them and uh and and speaking to them you know, bring revelation to them right so in a sense the sahib to sallallahu alaihi wasallam Right, that uh, that that, that the people kept saying, oh, a jinn came to you, a jinn came to you, because if you think about it, if you're in 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 a, in a cave, and out of nowhere a man appears, and this man begins to talk to you, and then it it, it hugs you, right, and then and then you get terrified, you run away, and wherever you look, you see this man at the horizon, and um, all this this, you know, like you would think jinn, right, jinn, jinn. <laughs> if you go back to your family, you tell your family this happened to me, right, they were like. You could not jin, right? Some jin came up to you and, and it's bothering you. They will say that to you, and right? nobody will think angel. And of course, for us, Allah Almighty, so them, right? Sayyidina Khadija has been prepared by Waraqa bin Nawfal, right? And she was the one who affirmed to him angel. In fact, he had no doubt. So some actually had no doubt that it was an angel, right? But just he wasn't afraid. And Habib says that he said that he was afraid. Some people think that when he said he was afraid, they think they think that he said that he's afraid because that he has been afflicted by. Uh, uh, a devil, you know, by 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 a jinn. But Habib says that no, right? His 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 statement that he says I'm afraid, right, is that he's afraid he's not, or he's he's afraid his people will not be able to accept this message. And when they're not able to accept this message, then then the next thing that will be up for them will be punishment. And he's afraid. Right? He's afraid that they will not take this. Right. So as for him delivering the message. He knows that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will assist him, and Allah will give him the ability to deliver the message. He's just very afraid that the moment a, a prophet gets a message, right, it can go two ways, right? That they all embrace it, and they become believers, and they become beloved of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, or they reject it and they're destroyed. And when they're destroyed, they enter into the hellfire. Therefore, he's afraid, right? So, Amma Sahibukum bi Majnun. وَلَقَدْ رَآهُ بِالْأُفُقِ الْمُبِينَ Right, so it, uh, in the next time we'll go through these meanings uh, in uh, in detail. Right, and he says that your companion, he is not crazy for surely he saw him. I mean, he saw Jibril clearly in the horizons. وَمَا هُوَ عَلْ غَيْبِ بِضَنِينَ وَمَا هُوَ بِقَوْلِ شَيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ So you see how all the defense coming in, eh? Right, that, that is all of what you're saying is all nonsense. It's really the word of a noble angel. It's not by shaitan. It's not by his own perception or his own thinking. It's not his own, his own, uh, you know, uh, uh, narrative. Uh, it's not his own um, invention. Nothing of this sort. Uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says that for surely he saw the angel, uh, and, and it's also to 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 firm up the prophet sallallahu uh, alaihi wasallam that he saw uh, what he saw and he knows what he saw. Right, the Quran is not the word of a devil, and and one of the, the clearest signs the Quran is not the work of a devil is because the Quran nowhere in there commands to evil, and the devil his only purpose is to bring people to the hellfire, and he wants people to do evil. And by looking at the whole Quran, you know it is from start to end. I right, talk about the Creator. I talk about the first man. Talk about prophets. He talks about you know uh, good deeds against bad deeds. It warns for the day of judgment. Well, the devil do these kind of things. <laughs> you know, the devil write and uh, uh, inspire you know, a book whereby whereby he this you know warns everybody about a day of judgment. Or even even you know even better the, the stories of the devil himself in the Quran itself. You know, when the devil go around saying you know Iblis did this, you know, and so don't take Iblis as your friend. I don't you know. They will not do that. It's a, it's just the the argument. It, it holds no ground whatsoever. Like if you go by 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 you know there are no signs of possession in the Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They know how people are when they are possessed. He was not a possessed man. Right? They, they, and they know it. They can see you know the face of a person when he is possessed. Even in our time, when people are possessed, you can actually, you can actually see. You can see in their faces. It's an evil that comes that comes forth in their faces. Because they're being they're being they're being bothered right, by certain certain things, right? But uh, for Rasulullah Islam, it was very clear. He had his, and they said he's not crazy, because they know crazy people. He's not crazy, he's not. 
is clear right he's he's a clear mind he knows what he's saying it is exactly but the thing is that they can't just can't explain the beauty of it and where is he getting this from and that's why the quran and the rasul of himself together together right, they are the strongest uh, proofs right, that this is really from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right, and it's only by their nafs right, that they have rejected it so inshallah next week we'll go a bit more into these verses it ends up with that, with that verse Where are you going? Think about your life Where are you headed? And this is one of those questions in the Quran by it, it, comes, it, comes, it really comes out of nowhere And it hits you So reading all these things about the Quran About Rasulullah and about everything And out of nowhere the question comes Where are you going? Why, 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 are, you, why are you Or the people in the time of Rasulullah why are you running away from this Quran? In huwa illa zikrun alamin. It's just a reminder. If you want to be reminded, be reminded. If you don't want to, then just don't, don't be reminded. And why must you be violent? And why must you fight him? Why must you kill him? Why must you slander it? And why must you know, if, up, 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 today, today? Why must they try to destroy the Quran? And why must they try to remove, you know, uh, why must they try to re- destroy the name of Rasulullah Why? If you don't believe in it, if you think that it's not true, if you think it's the word of a devil or whatsoever, then leave it. Ah. Right, leave it. And many of the people in time of Rasulullah they say to the, to the, to the Quraysh, uh, if he is on the truth, then all his glory is your glory. And if he is a liar, then the people will find it, will, will pick it out, and they will bring him down. Like, why must you fight him? And the answer is because they know he's on the truth. They actually know he's on the truth. And they just don't want that to prevail because they're afraid their businesses will be affected. It's just it's very simple, the answer. Very simple. So Allah says, you know, where are you going? It's just a reminder. That's all it is. In huwa illa dhikrunil alameen. Liman sha'a minkum ayyastaqim. And well, this reminder is for, who, for whosoever amongst you who wants to be upright. If you want to be correct, you want to be good, you want to be proper. Quran's for you. Now, if you want to be, you know, uh, led by your nafs and your hawa and this dunya and people and whatsoever, then go your way. Now, it's, this, it's a choice. It's a decision. And you don't will anything real, in reality except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Lord of the worlds, has willed it uh, 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 before time. Right? So, inshallah, we will go into that uh, in in the next lesson, we will finish Surah Taqwir, we will have Surah Abasa, and Surah Nazi'an, and Surah, uh, and, and, and Surah Naba, inshallah. Okay, any questions about this? No questions? Okay. questions? Uh, is the one that you will do for the first nine days of Zuhijjah. La ilaha illallah ala al-layali wa shuhur La ilaha illallah ala ayami wa duhur La ilaha illallah it, Usually, when it comes to the time, you will find it being spread everywhere Especially for Muasala, it should be a Muasala La ilaha illallah bi layli idha as'as La ilaha illallah bi subhi idha tanafas Right, it's part of it No, it's in there it's from this surah. Okay, any questions? No questions? Alhamdulillah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bring life to our hearts by the Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fill our veins and our, uh, and our life and, and those whom we love with love for the Quran and holding on to the Quran. May the more we learn about the Quran, the more we learn the Quran, the more amazed we are by the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحة ان الله يرزقنا على المنافع وعمل خالص ما هو مستعين بلا هدى ويسر بقبل النبي محمد صلى الله عليه واله وصحبه وسلم والى ارواح المؤمنين المشركين وذوي الحقوق علينا والى حاضر الامم